All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ow! Doc, what would happen to the car? Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact! Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler! I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. What are you talking about? A time machine? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal... Look out! Uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. Yes. Mass equals high. Consequences could be catastrophic? Whoa. Deja vu. Uh, Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake. Doc! Doc, no! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc! Marty? Is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and, and Doc was there. 
Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap! I'm late! Dad, are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. I miss Einstein. Hey, let me! Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. G sorry, Marty. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley, way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse! You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah? So? So how about letting me have that model courthouse uh, for old time's sake? Nah, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly.
Hey, Biff. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. Yeah, then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh... Um... Not enough. Ah, uh, never mind. Looks like a hand crank lightning rod, or maybe a lightning powered pencil sharpener. He's dead. I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! Do you think dreams can... predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. About Biff, Dad, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Let's make some noise. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again.
Here's an oldie, but a goodie. A one, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Whoa! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. <sighs> Ah, uh, Doc, where are you? Doc? Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Marty? Ah! Marty, if you're hearing this recording, then the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I programmed the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you've come to my rescue in the past. Or was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading marked Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed, uh... Oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. After all the trouble I went through getting this thing, there's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? What do you know about this shoe, Einie? Great Scott! I think he's onto something!
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to dock, Einie? Starbase Zero. I hope Jimmy's fixed the wild gunman machine. I guess there's time for a quick game. Okay, now I'm ready. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Why couldn't Doc have invented a dog translator? Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh... Yeah? All skateboarders are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. E. Strickland? You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't you? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. State your business, child. You're making me miss Merv. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. A shoe? Now, now, what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! Sorry, Einstein. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Hmm, much better. So neat and orderly. Yeah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh, Have a seat, Sonny. Hey! You kids! Put out those cigarettes! Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. 
Miss Pretty Whiskers is very particular about who handles her food. <laughs> is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. Einstein brought me that shoe from the past. But when in the past? Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. Uh, you forgot to turn on you! the... You! It's spelled with a U, you illiterate vandal! Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Brown Mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Stop looking at me. Oh, that's peculiar. The water still hasn't come to a boil. Miss Pretty Whiskers? Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Man, these are powerful. I could see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out-of-control hedonist. Just like his father. If there's a clue to find a doc out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. Uh, Miss Strickland? Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! 
Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe figs about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that? Chip Cannon! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! Rebuilt in February, 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. Marshal Strickland. My grandfather. Gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. Jeez, they all look like they've got sticks up there. What's that? Nothing. Jeez, they all look like they've got sticks up there. What's that? Nothing. Surely the water's boiling by now. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? 
It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Uh, we're doing... Grapes of Wrath? Right. Oh, Steinbeck. Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor. Uh, fluxy. I'd better keep an eye on this. It's really my only way of keeping track of Doc's fate. I'd better keep an eye on this. It's really my only way of keeping track of Doc's fate. I can't leave the DeLorean now. Doc's waiting for me in 1931. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy?
Young man? Excuse me, young man? Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... You can mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Yeah, tell them, go ahead, make my day. Make your day what? Never mind, I'll play around with it and see if I can come up with something better. Mr. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no. Down, boy. Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? Where is Hill Valley Police Station? Cripes, this place looks old, even for 1931. Psst, Doc! <gasps> Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, y you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum-shattering proportions.
Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just... Tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed Just to... Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the soup, stay for the salvation. McFly! Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly! The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it! If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway... I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Brown River. 
President. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Young Doc's in the courthouse. I hope I'll be able to recognize him. Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H2 A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? No, no, no. What am I missing here? Or do we take H to stand for Hermitian line operator? But well, in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? Uh, what do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before 8, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. But how many new...
Na. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Or do we take H to stand for the Hermitian line? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. To the speed of light. Oh, it comes back to H. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket-powered drill? Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office! I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket-powered drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning? Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor. Uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket-powered drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena.
Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Nice bike. Huffy? Uh, Huffy? I'm not Huffy. I'm passionate. Passionate about justice, safety, law and order. Uh, n never mind. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though, of course, I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. The meeting isn't due to start for a little while, so that'll give our people some time to set up. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. Hey, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh, which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses. Let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? The Stay Sober Society. Bless you for thinking of them. But that meeting isn't scheduled to start for a little while. And we wouldn't want them eating cold soup. I got a book. Oh? Where?
say cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right. Just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Excuse me. You talking to me? So this place used to be a soup kitchen. What do you mean used to be? <clears throat> Despite recent changes in ownership, this joint is still available for the purposes of distributing food to the needy and the not-so-well-to-do. And no other purposes whatsoever. Right. What's a tough guy like Kid Tannen doing running a soup kitchen? Mr. Tannen purchased the soup kitchen from the Sisters of Mercy in an effort to repair his reputation as a respectable community figure after his fine name was besmirched by the malignant and malicious, malicious, the actions of the misguided vandals that, that, that done burned down his place of business. It's speakeasy. I cannot confirm nor deny any claims of so-called illegal bootlegging at the, the, just eat your damn soup, pipsqueak. Why is the soup in a barrel? Cause it's hard to ladle off the floor. Can I have a bowl of soup? You're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Uh, what kind of soup is this? It, it tastes like... Scrolle ribolita? I was gonna say weak old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look, all I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Parsley? It might help to, uh, complement the mellow flavor of the cabbage. Complement the mellow... What are you talking about? Trust me. Hmm. We might be on to something, kid. Let me see what I got. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no. Uh, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, it's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline.
There's no way I'm gonna keep that door open without some help. Ah, Miss Strickland. Come for some more soup? Come now, Mr. Donnelly. You know I wouldn't set one foot in this mockery of all that is good and decent if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss you said hello. I'll just bet you will. <clears throat> what is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. Pretty neat, Doc. <clears throat> nope. I'm still not getting through here. But at least those tables are propped up now. I hope Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. Pretty neat, Doc. <laughs> nope. I'm still not getting through here. But at least those tables are propped up now. What is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. Soup? Please. And tell Kid that soup or no soup, he's not fooling anyone. And they picked up the barrel of hooch. Now all I have to do is to get it from her somehow.
Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The Stay Sober Society. That's right. They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett, volunteering his father's house for our meeting. Huh? Uh, wait there! Michael! What in the name of Thomas Alva Edison do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch. But we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No! Out of the question! Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house! What do we know about these people? They're really polite. We don't know that! They're a bunch of really great guys. We don't know that! They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well, okay, but... A pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy for him. What's wrong with a little noise? It'll be like a party. My pop is not the partying type. They'll be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh, yes! I play my tambourine very softly. You hear that? Yes, but... But what? But it's still impossible! Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket-powered drill tonight. We don't? No, I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! You will instruct the members of the society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Edna Strickland, I don't know how to thank you for your generosity. Oh, um, uh, pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. I've got a bad feeling about this. Now you worry too much, Emmett. Now all we gotta do is serve that subpoena, and we're off to build your rocket drill. And get my patent. Yeah, your, uh, patent. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I guess you won't talk about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. Isn't a soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. How come you won't let the Stay Sober Society hold their meeting in the cellar of your soup kitchen? We got other plans for that cellar, and it don't necessarily involve staying sober. Edna Strickland thinks your soup kitchen might not be on the up and up. That dame gets on my nerves. Got a great pair of gams, though. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. 
Well, he's my employee, and he's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Hey, kid. Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What did you do? Oh! <clears throat> Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! Emmett! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Al, fix me up. Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. Hey, honey. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy. Can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? <laughs> Where's he going? Only one way to find out. Huh. Deja vu. Need any help? Um, never mind. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! Hey, Arthur, can you come down a minute? Do I know you? We've got some important information for you, but we can't yell it. It's private. Then put it in a postcard and send it. I'm stuck up here till the boss tells me I can leave. Sorry. Some other time. What now? What do you think you're doing? I'm throwing the subpoena. You can't do that. You have to hand it to him. I have to hand the subpoena to Arthur, not throw it. Thanks for bringing us here, boy. We'll take it from here. I don't need to push it again. Arthur's already there. Someone's playing tricks on me. What now? It 
it's me again. Please come down. Why? I'm your grand... uh, mother's great nephew. You mean my second cousin? Yeah! Glad to know you, but I can't leave this building till the boss says so. He's given strict orders. Sorry. Some other time. Need any help? Um, never mind. What now? I'll give it back to him after I give him the subpoena. Well, well, look who's back. They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, Matches. down from there, you son of a bitch! Right now! That's an order! I don't think they're in a talkative mood don't right now. Don't make me angry, schmucko! Get down here and face the music! You can't get away that easy! Nobody puts one over on Kid Tannen and lives to tell about it! Yep. What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! You're only making it worse for yourself! The longer you stay up there, the longer I'm gonna take evacuating your guts! Eviscerating. That's what I said. So if you know... Einstein! Help! Lay off! Get away from Get me, you crazy mutt! Go, go away, dog! We're busy here! Go on, scram! Hey! Where'd he go? You let him get away, idiot! I hope Arthur's still where I left him.
What now? Arthur McFly? Yeah? Got something for you. Thanks. A subpoena? Ordering you to appear in court and provide evidence in the investigation into- Kid Tannen? Take it back! You can't get rid of it, Mr. McFly. Once you've been served, it's your duty to report to the court at the earliest possible time. Failure to do so could lead to a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? But kid will kill me. Stupid, stupid Artie. Holy cats, what am I gonna do? I suggest you avail yourself to the protection of the court. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Well, we've served the subpoena and gotten a barrel of booze delivered to your house. Looks like we're off to your lab to build your rocket drill. Ah, uh, you do have a lab, right? What kind of future patent holder would I be without a lab? Come on! Doc! I'm off to get the rocket drill. Good! <gasps> Come on, let's go! Time waits for no man! Are you sure this is gonna work, Emmett? Don't let the ramshackle nature of my laboratory fool you. If all goes according to plan, we'll soon be in possession of the most powerful rocket fuel known to man! That's great! Uh, how? Well, it's very simple. This crankshaft induces a powerful direct current into the electrolysis chamber, producing hydrogen which must be periodically released into the primary distillation barrel! While tending to the hydrogen, we'll also need to regularly sprinkle these shredded protein flakes into this aquarium of tuber bacteria to generate the necessary nitrogen to catalyze the reaction! Cool. Oh, hot! Extremely hot! The temperature of the reaction must be kept at a steady temperature of 623 degrees Kelvin by carefully pumping these bellows! Any questions? Uh... Emmett? Why is there a brace of drunkards gathering on our lawn? Sweet fancy Moses, it's my father! So? So, he doesn't know I'm engaging in acts of scientific exploration in here. He thinks this is where I go to pour through my law books. Oh. You tend to the reaction, I'll try to get rid of him! T tend to the what? Can't we just start over after he's gone? It's too late! The reaction's already started! Don't worry, I'll try to help you out where I can. But- Emmett? Uh, coming, father! Father! Don't you father me, child! Pressuring me! To be something I'm not! <laughs> if you knew what called your mother and I you can someday you are good. You will have to learn. Do learn. Maybe I should just get struck by lightning. Would that make you happy? Oh, maybe your burning passion, Father, but it is not mine. You will have to learn. You will learn. Excellent. Now twist the valve there. Great. We're about a quarter of the way home. Damn it! Get back here! Oops. <laughs> You're going to find out. Oh, what use is a microorganism for long? I, I hope someday you have children and you will not. I don't. There is a flame inside me that cannot be quelled by your legalistic gobbledygook father. He will. My blood pressure.
Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Don't you turn your back on me! <laughs> You're going to find out. Can't you see this is eating me up inside? I hope someday you have children and you will look Is it my fault if I don't get a spark out of laws and statutes? Don't you have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? <laughs> You're going to find out when you get older. And <laughs> I hope someday. What do you call a room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building? A good start. <laughs> this may come as a shock to you, Pop, but not everyone wants to be a lawyer. Ah, halfway there. Emmett! Keep up the good work. Lawyers are nothing but overblown bags of gas. Are you trying to spin this argument around to my failings? Sunday. This is not food for thought, Pop. It's gruel. Father, why don't you ever listen to me? You know who invented fire, Pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer. <laughs> if it weren't for scientists, men like you would still be divining the future with sheep's bladders and goat gizzards. Why do you keep bellowing like that? I don't know what's eating you, father, but I wish you would go on a diet. <laughs> You're in. What did you do? Emmett, who are you talking to in there? No, no one, Father. You don't get to control my life just because you've fed and clothed me for 17 years. Sunday, you guys. Stop getting so hot under the collar, Pop. Pressure? You're a child. You don't know anything about pressure. Yes, I have no idea what kind of pressure I'm under. Come down, come down. The hotter you get, the more I know I'm right. You're good on it. Sunday, you got Why should I honor your wishes? You treat me like common bacteria. What will it take to light a fire under your unappreciative hindquarters? There is a flame inside me that cannot be quelled by your legalistic gobbledygook, father. Almost there. Emmett! Uh, coming, father! I'm not just another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. Why won't you release me from your unattainable expectations? Stop getting so hot under the collar, Pop. Pressuring me to be something I'm not. Why don't you go feed the ducks, Father? Do you really want to vent our dirty laundry in public like this? How many times do I have to prove myself to you before I can shake your overbearing criticisms? Shame one great thing ever generated by a lawyer. Just pay attention to what I say. Emmett, I'm not true with you yet. I'm... Don't you have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? Why must you always scatter a condescension my way? No idea what kind of... I thought you were a scientist! Emmett! Why are you always bellowing at me? Can't you see this is eating me up inside? Don't touch anything until I tell you to. Emmett! I'm not just another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. You don't get to control my life just because you've fed and clothed me for 17 years. Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Emmett! 
No one's eating you, father, but I wish it would go on a diet. If you don't like my performance at the courthouse, then fire me. How many times do I have to prove myself to you before I can shake your overbearing criticisms? If it weren't for scientists, men like you would still be divining the future. What did you do? Damn it! What use is a microorganism for long? We call a room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building. A good start! Why don't you go feed the ducks, father? Why won't you release me from your unattainable expectations? Why should I honor your wishes? You treat me like common bacteria. To learn, boy. To learn. Law may be your burning passion, father, but it is not mine. This isn't food for thought, Pop. It's gruel. I cannot think. You know who invented fire, Pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer. Stop being such a crank. Lawyers are nothing but overblown bags of gas. Wait, did she fight? Is it my fault if I don't get a spark out of laws and statutes? Oh, oh, I'm afraid we'll have to take this up later, Pop. My soup's about to boil over. What? This isn't over, young man. Whew. Are you okay? You and your dad sounded... It was an argument we should have had a long time ago. We... No! What? Eureka! Now all we gotta do is fuel up the old rocket power drill and you and, and I can- I can take it and go. But don't you want to test it first? No time. The, uh, the, the last train for D.C. leaves in just a few minutes. All right. You've got to get this baby to the U.S. Patent Office. Uh, exactly. So tell me, Michael, when can I expect to hear back from the Patent Office? Oh, in about, I'd say... I, I can't. Huh? Emmett, I I'm not from the patent office. I don't understand. I, I, I lied to you, but I, I didn't want to. It was just, it was the only way I can get you to trust me. See, there's uh, somebody who's in big trouble. Uh, someone very important to me, to, to both of us. Uh, I can't tell you who, but I need to save him tonight. And, and I need your invention to do it. I'll get it back to you, I promise. And, Emmett, you're gonna be a great inventor. Wait! Keep the throttle at about eight. Okay, Doc, I got the drill. Now let's get you out of here. Come on, start. not supposed to be duck they're moving him to another facility for safekeeping oh i better go get a quote from the police chief paddy wagon intercepted suspect slain and they're still after him but how am i going to rescue him now
There's no way Edna's bike is going to be fast enough to catch up at that paddy wagon. Or is there? Hmm. At least the rocket part came out of this in one piece. I'm coming, Doc. Doc, I've got to get you out of here. What's that? I said you're still in danger. Never mind, never mind. Get me out of here, and we'll talk later. What's he doing here? Keys. The window shut tight. Oh good, the window shut. I don't think so. with a tire iron. Why on earth would I want to whack that with a tire iron? They won't budge. Why on earth would I want to whack that with a tire iron? I'll get you out. Be careful, buddy. The keys are on the dashboard, but I can't reach them. You need a protraction of pertinence. What? A reach extender. 
Kid Tannen's driving the truck. Kid Tannen? That explains a lot. I'll be back. I'll wait right here. Think throwing the hubcap at that would do any good. I need a distraction. Leave it to me! Hey! Hey, driver! You're driving too fast! Watch how you take those curves! What are you trying to do? Kill me? Not quick enough! Can you distract him again? No problem! Hey! Hey, driver! I demand to know where you're taking me! And I... How long is it gonna be till we get there? I object to your tone of voice! And I find this seat distinctly uncomfortable! Do you have a pillow I can sit on? Hey! I'm talking to you, driver! Don't ignore me! You! Ah! Ah! You... Thanks, Doc. I guess that's why they call you the streak. How did you know that? I have my sources. Stand back, Doc! I don't think throwing the hubcap at that would do any good. Where are you? Ow! Son of a bitch! Situation. That, the throttle. Why? Oh.
Are you okay? I'm fine. But I wonder what sorts of bizarre repercussions my younger self's invention of a flying bicycle will have on the timeline. Did you know that would happen? I had a suspicion. I never could keep those rockets from exploding. So, what do we do now? Now we get back to 1986 before our interactions with the past inevitably cascade into a calamitous future. Where'd you leave Einstein? Uh, Doc? He's not in the pound, is he? No, uh, but I think we've got bigger problems right now. Great Scott! Uh, what's happening? I don't know. We'll have to be careful not to run into ourselves. Hey, fellas. All right, McFly. Let's go see the boss. History says Tanner will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. I fear that nothing will save Hill Valley from descending into the fires of chaos and corruption. Nothing is over until Kid Tannen says it's over. <laughs>